Hi and welcome back to Bike Speeds. This week we're going to service this lovely Cervelo R3 road bike. We're going to do the front and rear derailleur cables on this one. We're going to put new bottom bracket bearings in. Even the handlebars on this weren't in the stem squarely, so we're going to address that issue. And there were lots of little details along the way that we've really made a huge difference to this bike. It was quite an enjoyable one to do this because we were constantly problem solving. So you can see here how the grease and grime has built up on the group set itself and clearly needs a good clean up. The thumb adjusters are quite corroded. There was a lot of corrosion on this bike. This front brake was not central to the wheel. So you can see how that's pulling the wheel across towards the fork there. You can see that pulling wheel that would put strain on the bearings every time the bike was braked. The, the wheel would be pulled over. That puts a strain on everything through the wheel. So we need to make sure that the brakes are on square once it's completed. Chain wasn't too bad. It's still got a bit of life in it. This is quite an old bike, so we want to make it last as long as possible. So we're going to degrease this chain, re-lubricate it, and that will go the final miles that it has left in it. So we'll just break that chain off. There wasn't a quick release in this one, so we actually fitted a quick release after we cleaned it up. So initially with any service, I get the bike pulled down. I take off the parts that I need to clean and notice things like this. There's a cap on that bearing there that's popped off simple little thing just a little pop back on there and that problem solved that's the sort of thing where that could eventually fall off and cause problems and also you can see here with the quick release how we've got corrosion at each of the ends so a little bit of corrosion there and a little bit of corrosion on the threads at the other end of that so we'll put that through the ultrasonic cleaner lubricate those threads lubricate the shaft so it doesn't bond and corrode into the axle of the wheel and make sure that simple little problems like that are solved with the service so off comes the cassette now with this one I'm going to degrease that it actually came up really really nicely you'll see that later on in the video you can see there look at the grime build up on that cassette there a lot of oil I mean it's a good sign really if the bike's been well oiled that's a good sign so I would never criticize that but it's certainly at the stage where it needed a good cleanup now we are detailing this bike so we're going to take off everything off the frame so that includes the bottle cages so they've come off now off comes the rear derailleur this cable was life extinct so we're going to actually replace that so we just cut that one off and off comes the rear derailleur ready for cleaning you can see there again how the debris and grime has built up over the time on that rear derailleur so we'll give everything there a clean up the customer stated that it wasn't shifting very well and that it needed a new cable and this is why big old kink up this end in this thumb adjuster really creased across you're never going to get a good shift out of that one so we're going to take out the thumb adjuster, clean that all up. And you can even see here on the outer of the cable itself that had worn through up at the headstock. And you'll see the reasons why as we move on with this one. A lot of wear there, so we had to also replace the outers as well. Initially, we weren't actually going to be doing the front derailleur cable, but we'll show you something that we spotted there. So we did in the end, but you can see here again, front derailleur, well oiled, well lubricated which has allowed that debris to really build up including on the fitting here on the frame itself even that was clogging up the dirt there so we cleaned down the frame but you can see what we got rid of there and that was sort of the tail of the entire bike really so get the brakes off as well so they come off you can see the grime there by the 105 logo between the two arms that's why we need to get that off and clean that one up off comes the front brake again very very dirty in need of work in need of sorting out and obviously we had to make sure that, that was central to the wheel to stop that wheel pulling over quite a bit of debris in the mount there so we had to just clean that out before we could actually even get our fitting in to get that brake off but that came off nicely so we're quite happy about that and you can see the grime build up in there very hard to clean these on the bike very hard to get right in there with your normal washing routine so that's why a service like this is well worth having done to a bike where we strip it fully down and clean it up so we're going to take the pedals off because we are taking the chain set out on this one to clean up and we also spotted a problem as soon as this came out with this the pedal arm on the left hand side has a self extractor as you can see there in the left hand that was missing off the bike we do keep a few of these in stock various different sizes that we can use as a tool so that we can actually pop that into the pedal arm so that we can use that self extracting mechanism to actually remove that pedal arm off of the chain set so that's now off and we can tap out that chain set away from the bike 
So now we do our inspections. So we look at the shaft here. We'll clean all that up as we go. We'll take those rings off and clean everything up there. And then I could hear, I could hear instantly the bottom bracket bearings had it. So we're going to need to swap those out as well. That's the next task is to remove those. So we pop our extracting tool into the bearing and remove that away from the cups. We'll repair just the bearing itself on this one. So it out pops the bearing. We'll actually do both sides, no point just doing one. It will have always put strain. If you've got one bearing worn, it would have guaranteed to have started to wear the other side with the movement. So never do one, always do them as a pair. So that pops out as well. So we'll have brand new bottom bracket bearings in this bike when it goes out. So out comes the tool. And you can see there the corrosion on that bearing. It's actually the ball bearings inside and the race that holds those inside is corroded. And that has weeped out of the seal that holds grease and grime in there. And it's allowed that to show that rust. So next up, I'm going to remove the handlebar tape. That was in quite a bad state. There were a lot of gaps in it and it wasn't very tight and it just wasn't very nice. So while I was taking that bar tape off, I actually noticed that the handlebars weren't in the bike square. And when we measured afterwards, you can see there the white line there is not in the center of the stem. It's actually five millimeters wrong. It's five millimeters out one side. So we're going to need to square up the handlebars there. So that's quite a, quite a big amount, really. So I'm going to just clean off the debris that sort of comes through on that logo and clean everything up before we put it back in. And we'll get that square in the stem. That in itself will be an improvement on the bike. That's the sort of thing that causes shoulder aches and pains, and we need that right. And you can see here the bolts that came out of that crown, they were rusty as well. So there's no point in putting those back in. So I'm going to replace those with nice, fresh, new ones. So we'll just do that back up now, get that nice and central. Also, I noticed that the actual levers themselves were four millimeters different in height, left to right. So we had this offset of the handlebars and also the levers themselves at different heights it would have been a very strange bike to have ridden especially if you're doing any distance on this bike i think you'd end up with aches and pains so we've got that all nice and central now next up we're going to take apart the rear derailleur this has all got to go through the ultrasonic cleaner it was quite grimy again you can see the build up on jockey wheels that's very common when a bike is well oiled as this one was that it actually attracts dirt to it and if it's not cleaned you end up with a pasty mess on the jockey wheels that then wears the chain and the drivetrain a little faster than it should do because it's almost like sandpaper sitting on the jockey wheels there I'm taking the chain rings off here so i can deep clean those as well now i decide what's going in the ultrasonic cleaner so i've got the chain the cassette the brakes the derailleurs they're all going to run through the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll get those nice and clean so once they've been through we now wash those off i like to use our detailing brushes we do these in a pack of five on a website if you ever want a pack of those we wash everything down with that you can get nicely in between the sort of plates and segments of any part that you're cleaning they're they're quite nice for doing that you can really work that in with those brushes and then also the cassette i mean what a huge difference we made to this if you remember back in the before shots this was caked in black oil that's now lovely and clean and already showing great reflection. And then also that chain cleaned up absolutely perfectly. There's nothing wrong with that at all. So that will do its final mileage before it's changed next time. And then obviously the chain set needed to clean that off, clean up all the shaft, make sure everything's nice and clean. And then we're just going to start lubricating everything up and putting it back together. So I'm using our copper grease here on the threads that hold the chain set together. That will stop them corroding and I can actually get them apart a little bit easier next time. And then I'm using general purpose grease where the metal to metal parts touch because that again will stop corrosion and stop them bonding together. And that will make them just that little bit easier to service next time for whoever's doing that, be that me or someone else. But we get those bolts back in there and then also torque those up just to make sure they're at the right setting before they go back on the bike. I like to draw everything on the front derailleur together nicely so that it's in its final position for adjustment because it's a left right adjustment so we want that all tight and right i'm now lubricating the jockey wheel pivots these don't have bearings but still flow nicely with a bit of our premium grease in them and then i'm using our loctite 222 on the threads that hold the derailleur together that will just stop those ever coming undone on the bike the jockey wheels go in now that's the guide wheel and then the pulley wheel 
These are very tolerant and with the grease in they will last almost forever on this bike. And then the other thing I also do is I lubricate the thumb adjusters. This is something that I don't think is ever done from the factory. Notorious for seizing thumb adjusters, be that in a frame or on a component like this. It's one of the missed things that's done with servicing that people often don't do is lubricate thumb adjusters. So important to do those because it makes using them out on the road as well if you've got to do a quick adjustment so much easier if they're not all bound up in the component and also there you see i just lubricate the pivot points of the derailleurs as well and the spring itself so we're using our general purpose oil on the pivot points now what i'm removing here is actually packaging from the factory that's supposed to be removed before you ride the bike now i see no end of these with that still on there so I always remove that when I'm servicing because it just finishes the detailing off of the bike to make sure that it's got that lovely reflection of the component and none of the original manufacturing packaging is still on the bike. And that grease selection there in the background, we actually do those in a pack of five on our website as well, exactly the same as what we use day to day. So they'll help your servicing as well. I'm just using our silicon grease there on the slider for that spring. Again, often missed, but it just helps the actuation of that brake. And then these skewers i'm going to also lubricate so a little bit of general purpose grease along the shaft a little bit of copper grease on the threads there and a little bit of general purpose oil on the lever itself will help that again make it actuate and work nicely as it's put back in the bike and used during the bike's life between servicing now we're going to wash down the bike so i'm using our big softy brush there that is a nice soft brush so it works the debris off the bike without really being too harsh on the paintwork or the frame itself it's a lovely brush to use that one we use that on all our servicing that just works for us that brush there and now i'm going to dry it all down with a microfiber towel to draw that dirt and that soapy water off of the bike before we start detailing and polishing now we had quite a few bad scuffs on this bike you can see here this was on the top tube it gone through the paint and there was just signs of the carbon fiber showing now we do these vinyl stickers Again, we do these in lots of different colours, available on our website in an A4 sheet, various different sizes and shapes. We just find that there's usually a shape to suit the problem that you're trying to solve. I think there's probably a bag or something put on that crossbar, so that will be covered by that. And we had a rub here from a tyre on the stay there, so we need to make sure that that's also covered up just to stop that tyre rubbing that paint anymore. And then we had a huge rub here. The carbon had actually welled a little bit where this has been rubbing this bike. I mean, this is quite an old generation of bike, so we've got quite a lot of rub in there. And by just putting one of our vinyl detailing stickers on there, one, it takes your eye off it, but two, it can now rub the sticker away, which can be replaced quite easily rather than the paint and the bike itself away, which can't be replaced so easily. So once we're happy with the detailing, we're now going to polish this bike. We use now lovely Auto Glim Super Resin Polish. This really works the dirt and the grime and the debris that sits on a frame from the road over the years and gives a lovely protection on that bike, really buffs up. It was a shame of this bike because we're limited with the side light and we've got a window that really alters the lighting on a bike. But this bike absolutely popped out. But the greyness of it and the weather that we've had, it didn't really show quite as it was in the flesh the reflection on this paint it really was to die for it came up beautifully this bike so i was very very pleased with that so now we've polished it we're also going to use our auto glim rapid ceramic spray this transforms a bike it really does it just gives that extra gloss and that extra smoothness to the touch when you run your fingers along the bike it's lovely and soft the paint always feels softer after being ceramic coated and it really protects that frame from grime and road film moving along the way. And again, we sell that on our website, so please do check out that. We'll put the link in the description. Next up, I'm going to wash the back wheel. This actually had quite a film of oil on the rim where I'm now drying down with the microfiber towel there. We had to work at that quite a bit off camera as well as on camera to really make that nice. And you can see how clean that hub is now. So a little bit of general purpose grease before the cassette goes on. That will stop again any corrosion forming and help that come on and off for cleaning and replacing as it wears out so that's on there nicely talk that up the last thing i want to do with this wheel is move that logo to the center of the valve itself i like to do that it helps you when you get a puncture 
to locate a puncture it also just looks aesthetically pleasing to get that over the valve so i always turn my tires on any bike that i'm doing where that logo is not over the valve get the manufacturer's name over the valve and that centralizes and settles everything and it also matches it to the front wheel so it's absolutely spot on so we inflate that now on goes the valve cap itself and we're ready to refit that so next up we're going to put in the new bottom bracket bearings so a little bit of grease there just to help them go into the cups they're a plastic cup so we don't need any more than that and in go the new bearings they're pressed in so they're now ready to go and while i was doing this job obviously there's a little bit of setting up with these i noticed here a little sharp edge and when i inspected that the front derailleur cable had completely frayed off and i never noticed that it was actually changing gear nicely but you can see there that's so close to breaking that's so close to life extinct so we had to also replace the front derailleur cable so this is the point where we cut off the old one feed the outer through there just to guide that through the frame when we put the new cable in and remove them from the shifters themselves so this went from just doing one cable to two but that's the sort of thing we're trying to notice when we're doing a service like this so that the bike goes back absolutely on point for the customer you can see here how we've got that right angled sharp kink and crease in that cable so it would never have shifted correctly anyway this is the rear and i'll show you the front again in a second they were absolutely identical they both had that sort of kink in and they'd sat themselves into that shifter formed a shape inside there you're never going to get good shifting with that so it was the right time to replace both those cables so again you can see here they've got that sharp bend in that cable there so we're going to actually replace these with what we call our super slick cable they're a nice tightly wound stainless steel cable so they're actually slightly thinner than these but it's not that they've got less metal in them it's that they're so tightly wound they're so smooth to the touch they give a lovely shift these cables so that's what we're replacing these with our super slick cables again available on our website and we'll just tape those in their position on the handlebars before we redo the handlebar tape again you can see where i've used that guide through the frame so that just helps me feed it back through the frame into its correct position and i'm also just going to use a little bit of copper grease there on the threads that hold that frame fitting into the bottom bracket area there i'd noticed when i took that off it had a lot of white corrosion on it where it was beginning to corrode so we cleaned that up now i'm bar taping this bike the previous bar tape was all ruffled at the top on both sides so this complemented the service perfectly it's the main point of contact with the bike which will deteriorate again but it's nice to refresh the look and feel after a big job like this one next up we put the chain set in so we're using our premium grease as we slide that into the bottom bracket and on goes the pedal arm there so we talk that up as we go because again as i've mentioned before we always like to get the bottom bracket and the chain rings and the front derailleur and everything in its final set position so as we can adjust it correctly on go the pedals again i'm using our copper grease on the threads which is sort of our standard practice with any threads is to get the copper anti-seize grease on the threads to stop them binding and then on goes that front derailleur there before we put in the new cable and that will absolutely be perfect when we get that finally adjusted and changing gear nicely talking up those settings as well and then we just pinch off that cable before we put a new cable end onto there and that will be absolutely spot on as it goes forward just check the fitting of the hanger itself they were a little bit loose but they didn't have any movement but they needed a little pinch up to make sure they were nice and tight and we can also get that new rear derailleur cable into that derailleur it was quite a pleasure doing this bike i did enjoy this one there was lots of little things we were sort of solving and sorting out along the way Savellas are always a special occasion they don't really age they're just always nice bikes they're lovely design everyone knows the Savello logo and brand and they're always a pleasure to do these bikes i used some copper grease on the mount of the brake there to stop that corroding in future the cables were absolutely fine for both the brakes i had no worries about reusing them they both pulled with no resistance at all same with the front brake same principle copper grease on the threads just to stop those binding into the component on goes the component and then we'll set this one up so that it's nice and square on the wheels as well before we give the bike back so that it's braking nice and evenly so that's back on new cable end on there and everything's beginning to go back on nicely so on go the bottle cages 
Again, I'm putting a little bit of grease in the threads on the frame to stop anything there binding that protects those threads that are in the frame from any corrosion or any problems in the future. So we're quite happy with that. Now time to put the wheels on. So on goes the front wheel, on goes the back wheel, and then I can get the chain on and begin our adjustments to get this bike absolutely spot on. So chain goes on, we actually fitted a quick release link on this one because it was actually originally pinned so at least now he can take the chain off again if he wants to clean it or indeed if we want to service it so a little bit of adjustment on the thumb adjuster there for the new cable and up it goes on the gears up and down the gears make sure everything's working perfectly and it's absolutely spot on there front derailleur spot on again so we're quite happy with the way it's changing gear but the other thing i noticed here was that the front brake pad on one side was a little bit low on the wheel just sitting slightly below the braking track there so we need to raise that up get that adjusted correctly make sure they're central I'm checking the brakes as well now that they've been squared up and the pads are at the right height they pull perfectly and now i can work my way through the bike with a torque wrench so obviously we've moved those brake levers certainly the one on the right to line up with the one on the left so we needed to make sure that was correct obviously we've had this apart as well squared up the handlebars so we need to make sure they're correct and with this one I actually undid these and moved the logo on that bearing cover there so that it was actually square to the frame it turned a little bit in its lifetime I like logos to be spot on so we just turned that logo to make sure it was in line with the frame and stem and then torque up the stem bolts themselves just to make sure that's all correct even things like your pinch bolts on your cables all have a torque wrench set in just make sure they're all correct make sure the pads are correct make sure the mounts are correct everything has a torque wrench set pedals i'm just checking those as well obviously chain set we've already done so we're quite happy there you can see here how loose the seat post clamp was that needed talking up the saddle clamp itself they were a little bit loose as well so i know that now the saddle's not going to come loose when he does a 100 mile bike ride on this one and the same with the back brake same as with the front brake we go through all the fittings make sure they're all talked up correctly all to the correct specification rear derailleur front derailleur cassette the entire bike is talked up and right so now we've got this bike finished it presents very very well i'm thrilled with the way this one come up i think this rider will be astonished when he collects this bike so i hope you've enjoyed this video please do subscribe to the channel please do like this video it's the easiest way to help the channel and really does make a difference comment your thoughts on Cervelo and your experiences with them and we'll see you again very very soon bye for now